Hello everyone and welcome to the character animation series by Telegram Studios. In this video, I'll be teaching you how to do a bouncing ball animation. Now, I know this is not exactly character animation, but before we attempt to do something as complex, as difficult as character animation, we need to know how to do basic animation in Blender first. So, let's get straight into it. First thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and change this mode to the animation mode. Uh, this gives us more windows to work with and makes it more easier for us to do animation. So what I want to do is I want to go to the front view by pressing numpad 1 and I want to delete the camera and lamp by right clicking, shift right clicking to select both and then X delete. I'm also going to go ahead and delete this cube by selecting the cube X delete and we want to add a ball by pressing shift A and then UV sphere. Um, that's it. Then we're going to open up the toolbar by pressing N. And what I want to do is I want to sort of draw the sketch of how the ball should bounce. Uh, sort of like an outline. Uh, so to do that, I, I want to use the grease pencil. Grease pencil sort of allows us to draw sketches all over our blender scene. And when you, when you actually render a scene like this, the sketches won't actually show up. So don't worry about it. You can scribble away as much as you like. So press new, new layer. And I'm going to select a view. What this means is this will draw, whatever I draw here will be drawn on the 3D view. If you press surface, you will draw on the surface of the object. Uh, I don't really know what the other two are, so I'm just going to sort of ignore that. I need to probably explore that a little bit later, later on, but I need to get more experience first. So I'm going to close this by pressing the N uh, key again. I'm, I'm going to open the T, which will open the left side of the toolbar. And if I go to grease pencil over here, I can press use sketching sessions. That sort of allows me to draw as much as I want until I hit escape. So, so to draw the grease pencil sketch, I'm just going to hit D and then click. So now I'm in drawing mode. All right, so now let's draw the outline of our bouncing ball. So let me can go like that, bounce, 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 bounce. Bounce, bounce. Okay, it's probably not a very good drawing, but let me fix that up. Uh, let's go again to T, sorry. Escape. Escape will get you out of the drawing session. T, eraser. I'm just going to erase that bit, and then let's just redraw this bit here. Okay, draw again, and then fix up that. All right, I think that'll. That would be good enough. Okay, not a very good drawing, I suppose, but uh, good enough. Okay, so now what we're going to do is going to sort of animate our position. So I'm going, I'm just going to put this keying set as default to lock rot scale. You can see it there. What this does is every time I create a keyframe, it will create a new keyframe for the location, the rotation, and the scale. I'm going to enable this automatic keyframe insertion. So that means every time I work with an object, it will automatically create a key here every time I manip manipulate this object, sorry. So, I'll go to the first frame and I'll move the ball here. Now, uh, you need to study timing to get to understand how long, how like how quick the ball would bounce and everything. I've sort of experimented this a little bit earlier, so I sort of know that um, around te frame 10, the ball will bounce here. And then at frame 20, see so every time I move the object, you, you can see the keyframes automatically being created. Um, and obviously, yeah, so for example, I'll just move this here. So you can see the keyframe is now being created over here. If you want to delete a keyframe, you can either press Alt I and delete keyframe. Now the keyframe is gone. Or let's, press, let's put the key back there again. You can select the keyframe in the Dope Sheet Editor or even select the three, the location, the rotation and scale. Um, widgets on the graph editor, press X, delete keyframe, keyframe, delete keyframes, and they will then delete. So let's put that back there again. So we can, if I go back, let's sort of look at animation. Yeah, close enough. But we can see that the ball is sort of starting to bounce. I'm going to sort of halve the length here now. So at uh, 25. Oh, actually, it's not exactly correct, but I'm going to do it anyway. 25, I'm just going to put it here. Make it bounce. At 30. 
bring it back up here and then at 32 it's not exactly half but good enough you have to you have to play around with timing a little bit because if you want to get a better animation that way timing can help all right I guess I don't, I'm, I'm sort of going to ignore these last two. You can animate those if you like. Okay, you can see that the ball's taking a little bit while to go down, but it then it's sort of... I'm just going to go ahead and actually finish the last two. I said I wouldn't, but... Uh, let's put it here. And... Put it here, bounce it here. And... Here, a little bit there. Realistically, it shouldn't go that far. Okay, so let's have a look at the animation real quick. All right, so it sort of looks the timing looks okay, but the I feel like the first one. I feel like it's sort of taking it's slow to go. It's slow to sort of fall, but then it sort of speeds up towards the end. So maybe we can sort of make this one go a little quicker, and that might solve the issue. So to do that, I'm just uh, to do that, I'm going to go to the to the dope sheet editor. Press B, which means box select, and select the select all the keyframes uh, apart from the first one, and move it closer. So this will make it quicker. I guess I'll have to do the same to this to these frames and move it closer by pressing the G key. So you can see it's now a lot more quicker. Maybe I can move it a little bit closer. All right, so we can sort of see the ball bounce is a, is the timing is looking okay. Uh, this one looks like it's sort of accelerating there, so you need to sort of play around with the timing until you're until you're happy with it. Let me extend this out one. Oops. Yep, I think that timing looks okay. You can also use reference video footage if you if you can't uh, figure out the timing on your own. Um, I, I should actually be doing that because that gives more believable timing and such. But um, since this is for a tutorial to sort of show the to sort of show the idea, I'm, I'm being a little bit lazy. So I'm going to sort of hide the uh, sketch by pressing that I. That will hide it and. And now I can, um, yeah, let's, we can now work on making the ball. So if you look at, if you play back our animation, oh, by the way, to play back the animation, I press Alt A, which you can see over there. You can also press play like this. And to stop the animation, I'm pressing escape. Okay, so let's just have a look at our animation really quick and decide how good it looks. So I'll just close that. I'm pressing end, Alt A, and there's our animation. I guess it's okay for tutorial purposes. All right, whatever. It's good. Now, if I if I could just open that grease pencil sketch back again and play back over here, where oh, I'm sort of ruined my position. Okay, play back over here. You'll see that the shape of the curve is different. Of the of the bouncing ball like what I'm actually getting is sort of more like uh, this sort of shape when, when I when I actually um, draw sort of being this shape which is not exactly like a bouncing ball when you, when the ball bounces you don't you don't get it the shape doesn't go like this you need to make the shape go more like that as you see in the drawing and it needs to sort of bounce abruptly, not uh, smooth out at the end like that. And obviously it's slowing down as it comes towards the end. Now we can obviously fix this using the F curve editor. Uh, to do so, let's close this back again. So, um, as you play back animation, we notice that as the ball reaches uh, the impact zone, 
it slows down. Okay, you can't tell that here because the animation is going relatively fast. But you can sort of visualize it. It is sort of slowing down a little bit. So we need to make sure that the impact is really is sort of abrupt. It doesn't it doesn't slow down. To do that, we need to make sure that here we convert the keyframes to a vector. So if I select this keyframe here, which is where the impact is, and I press V, it will, it will change the keyframe handle type to one of these options over here. And we can select vector to make sure. Uh, obviously, I'll, I'll, I'll actually show you what it looks like over here. So let's select that again. Hit V and turn it to vector. Now you can see, compared to something like, so compared to this sort of shape, you get this shape, which is which is a lot more abrupt, which means some kind of impact has occurred. That's usually when you use vector when you when you want to portray some kind of impact or sudden turn or something like that. Robots and stuff. Are, if you're using robotic characters, they also can use vector because their movements are a lot more, more rigid. Using something like these automatic is um, for s smooth organic type of movement, which will suit character animation. But um, in, in actually in character animation, it's always better to have these types of shape curves. It's never okay to have this shape curve unless you have a character colliding with something or impacting, exactly like this ball. So, if we play, play back our animation, that looks a lot better. You can sort of sense the bounce. It looks a lot more realistic. So, uh, with every impact, that's exactly what I'm going to do. At this impact, I want to turn this to a vector. This At this impact, turn this to a vector, sorry. Here every two keyframes pretty much oops all right the vector so if i play back my animation you can see the ball bounce and that looks a lot better than before obviously it doesn't look um, appealing yet it sort of looks a little bit fake but you can sort of tell that it's a bouncing ball i think the timing could still be worked on but Let's see. Uh, I think there's a huge jump from here to here. There's a bit of a huge jump from, like you can see the ball bounces here, 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 and then jumps a huge distance where it shouldn't. It should just jump a little bit. So maybe I'm gonna move the ball back. So to do that, I'm always gonna move the X location back, but the rest of the keyframes also need to be moved back a little bit. So to do that, I'm only going to select the X location and hit V, which means it hides all the others. You can only see just the X location. Then I'm going to select all of this, which, which is all the keyframes after this position, and I'm going to sort of move it back a little bit. So grab Y, which means move, move along the Y axis, and then I'm going to move it a little bit back like that. Maybe a little bit more. Let's have a look at how that looks when played back. I think that looks much better. Yep. Alright. And obviously, let's just stretch out the timing. Oops. Let's bring these back again. All right. When we play back animation, there we go. We've got some pretty cool looking bouncing ball animation. Now, um, let's use some of the 12 principles of animation and make this bouncing ball a lot more appealing. So one thing we can do is when the ball impacts, we can add some squash and stretch. So when the ball impacts, it needs to squash, and over here we can use some stretching. So for example, so let's just go ahead and do that. Let's see if it makes it more appealing. Obviously, I want to have the keyframe before to have a scale as it is. So S and click, go one keyframe further, one keyframe ahead, S, scale, and then click, left click. Now let's go back to the to the middle keyframe again. Let's S on Z, which will scale on the Z axis, and then let's move it down. So 
So if I play back this animation, you can see that squash. I know it's a little bit extreme, it can be a lot more subtler, but depending on how cartoony your bouncing ball is, you can um, um, play around with that. So for example, if it's a very cartoony animation, you can put a lot more squashing on that, but if it's a little bit more realistic animation, a, um, an only subtle amount of squashing might uh, might be on, be useful. So let's go ahead and do the same with everything. So go one frame before the impact, scale, one, one frame ahead of the impact, scale, left click, or enter. S, enter. Scale on the Z, on the middle, on the impact zone, and then grab Z and make sure it impacts with the ground. Uh, I'm just going ahead and I'm just going to go ahead and do the same for each impact. So scale enter, frame ahead, scale enter, impact zone, S, Z, uh, maybe, maybe a little bit less squashing than before because it's not as strong now. Actually, I should do the same for this. Shouldn't be that huge. Squash. Uh -huh, one frame before, scale, one frame ahead, scale. S Z um, one frame before scale, one frame head scale, S Z subtle more subtle. And that should be okay. Alright, let's have a look at that. And there we go. A little bit more subtle on that. A bit more subtle on that one. All right, there we go. It's looking awesome and looking a little bit cartoony, but it, it's looking a little bit more appealing. So now I'm going to add it. We've done the squash. We can do a little bit of stretch. So to do the stretch, you go to some middle keyframe. If you're not exactly middle, just choose one ahead or one forward, whichever. And I'm going to enable the grease pencil again and sort of go to the middle. Oh, it's a little messy, but it doesn't matter. I'm just going to move it here to sort of get that shape. S to Z, and then do that. Go to the middle, uh, go to this frame here around the middle, which is frame 10. S to Z, scale here, and move it. Yeah, that seems okay. And then do the same at each uh, corner. So S Z, N not as much this time. S Z, not as much this time. S Z, not as much. S Z, not as much. And I think I'm not going to do it for the rest of them because I, I, it doesn't, it doesn't look like it's necessary. So let's hide the grease pencil and play back the animation. And it, look at that. It's looking sort of like those Disney animations. And I'm quite happy with that. I, th I think I actually should have added some stretching towards the end. Because I am going for that sort of very cartoony look. So just adding that one principle of character animation adds a lot of personality to this bouncing ball. And that's it. We ha Our bouncing ball animation is complete. I'm just going to leave it on frame 47. End it up on frame 47. And that's our bouncing ball animation. Now we could do some other stuff like anticipation or uh, follow through or something. And that's it, that ends this video. I hope you learned something useful from this video. And if you were able to follow along and understand the concepts quite well, I think you're pretty much ready to do character animation. Uh, and that's exactly what will be the focus of our next video. If you didn't understand something or found some parts a little bit difficult to sort of follow, then please feel free to drop a comment below or message me here or on Facebook, uh, wherever, I'm, wherever my social media presence is alive and I'll try my best to get back to you as quick as possible. Um, yeah, thanks for watching.